Good evening. Hello. Hi, Shubnit. Hey, good to see you. Juhi. All right, let us begin. So, um, <clears throat> like I'd mentioned yesterday, I'm going to start today's um, chapter, chapter two. Uh, it's called Your Inner Roommate. Day three. We're starting with this. From what I've marked when I was reading earlier uh, an hour back, there's a possibility we might even end up finishing this chapter today itself. So, Your inner growth is completely dependent upon the realization that the only way to find peace and contentment is to stop thinking about yourself. <clears throat> is the sound quality clear enough? Is it good? Can I get uh, some feedback on that? Hi Manat. Um, I'm absolutely fine, Manat. Yes, okay. Thanks, Shubhneet, for that feedback. So, I'm going to um, continue. So, uh, just a quick recap. Uh, yesterday was about, you know, we, we talked about the voice in our head. Um, and so, we're continuing. And uh, what Michael, the author, has done is... He's given it the name of an the uh, inner roommate. So your inner roommate. Okay, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this chapter today. Your inner growth is completely dependent upon the realization that the only way to find peace and contentment is to stop thinking about yourself. How interesting is that? You find peace and contentment if you stop thinking about yourself. Um... You're ready to grow when you finally realize that the I, and he's written I in inverted, double, inverted, uh, double quotes. Uh, you're ready to grow when you finally realize that the I who is always talking inside will never be content. Okay? It always has a problem with something. So when a problem is disturbing, this is very interesting. I've marked this and put an asterisk around this. Uh, because I do a lot of, you know, inner work, a lot of us do that, we, we're uh, in the space of introspection quite often. Hello, Ganesh, thank you for joining. So he's written something very uh, valuable here and I'm going to be using that quite often. When a problem dis is disturbing you, don't ask, what should I do about it? Okay, instead he says, ask, what? I'm sorry about that little disturbance. I forgot to switch off my uh, alarm that I've kept for, for uh, logging in every day. Um, so I just gave a reminder after a snooze. Yeah, so I'm going back. So he says, when a problem is disturbing you, don't ask, what should I do about it? Ask, what part of me is being disturbed by this? So this was... Uh, you know, very important for me to realize that I am not, if I ask what should I do about it, I am completely engaging with the problem. I am, you know, going head on with the problem, which is fine sometimes, it's okay to do that. But I think this, asking this other question that he has suggested here, what part of me is being disturbed by this problem? If I find that out, before I go to find a solution for that problem, if I find out what part of me is disturbed by this, 
maybe that problem won't exist you know um and i thought i i really actually thought about it there was a a, a case that i was working on earlier in the evening uh as part of my distance healing and um you know it was very interesting for me to observe that every time i sat to do the healing uh i was getting distracted and for a moment i got the thought that okay maybe this uh, you know it's the person or um uh it's the kind of case that i have you know it's it's uh, it, whatever it is so it was going straight again into my 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 uh, inquiry was going into what is causing the distraction so let's say the distraction became a problem for me okay and then i remembered this okay what part of me is getting disturbed and when i checked that what came up for me is <clears throat> there was a part of me that was in a playful mood today actually because earlier this morning uh when i was sitting uh, in my meditation um there was a very beautiful inner child healing and integration that i experienced um my 16 year old and once that uh, that healing happened she is so alive i didn't realize i it was like part of my meditation i did that it was done um when i asked this question i became aware that this child is so active inside and it wasn't a distraction anymore i honored her uh being active because for me for a long time it felt that that part of me had died so i honored her and i put that case uh, working on that case aside it was no longer a problem you know so um that's how how much it helped me hi tanuja um so yeah maybe you could also try that instead of asking what should i do about it you can ask what part of me is being disturbed by this what should i do about it you you know it, you've already fallen into believing that there really is a problem outside that's what he's saying If you want to achieve peace in the face of your problems you must understand why you perceive a particular situation as a problem like we just talked about okay uh that will cause you to look inside and see that there's a part of you that's having a problem with any kind of an emotion or a thought the very fact that you can see the disturbance means that you are not it like we did yesterday we were you know watching and uh, he <clears throat> talks i'll i'll continue reading here the very fact that you can see the disturbance means that you're not it the process of seeing something requires a subject object relationship we know that right the subject is called the witness because it is the one who sees what is happening right so if we become the witness then we are watching what is happening inside of us the object is what you are seeing in this case the inner disturbance this act of maintaining objective awareness of the inner problem is always better than losing yourself in the outer situation this is a very uh, very key line this act of maintaining objective awareness of the inner problem is always better than losing yourself in the outer situation you think that if you change things outside you'll be okay but nobody has ever truly become okay by changing things outside only the only real solution is to take the seat of witness consciousness and completely change your frame of reference yeah um are we all here on the same page 
getting uh, getting the drift what i'm saying i'll continue no solution can possibly exist this is again i have uh, put it in a box form the exist um, and my apologies if uh, the sound of my cat in the background is uh, a hindrance in in the audio quality please let me know didn't get the last line hi suman okay um <laughs> just just give me a moment sebastian abinay okay so hopefully that will keep him quiet for a while you think that if you change things outside you'll be okay but nobody has ever truly become okay by changing things outside the only real solution is to take the seat of witness consciousness and completely change your frame of reference no solution can possibly exist while you're lost in the energy of a problem this is so similar to what i talk about quite often that when you are when you are holding the space for uh, you know like i say i ask a lot of people i share with them that if you have a question coming up don't sit with it ask the question and leave it to the universe but if you're going to hold on to the question what do i do about this what do i do about this and then this voice inside always uh keeps repeating that whether we are paying attention or not <coughs> then we are not creating space for the answer to come in because the the question the energy of the question is occupying the space so much so ask the question and let it go and that's ex- that's very similar to what um michael is talking about frame of reference do he what i mean it's like change the whole perspective we're talking about the subject and object um over here right so instead of you becoming the object or becoming part of the disturbance you are observing the disturbance so you're becoming the witness and that's that's what he's talking about the frame of reference okay uh so i'll come back here no solution can possibly exist while you're lost in the energy of a problem that's what he's talking about here right uh everyone knows you can't deal well with a situation if you're getting anxious scared or angry about it yeah i think we all we all experience these kind of emotions at some point uh in our lives probably even in our day to day life it's not necessary that um you know uh, it has to be something big i mean when i'm there are times when i'm waiting uh at the bus stop to pick up my daughter from school and i know that the bus comes at a certain time with a with a range of 5 minutes delay here and there but sometimes when it becomes 20 minutes 25 minutes i do get anxious i do get concerned and and then you know that's when do i go into flurry of action call the school call the bus driver or do i wait if i'm waiting am i waiting patiently am i comfortable or is my head going in all kinds of directions with what could have happened uh so that's what happens when you are either getting drawn into that situation or you're observing or like michael says witnessing what is happening inside okay so the first problem you have to deal with is your own reaction you will not be able to solve anything outside until you own how the situation affects you inside right the first step is to deal with that part of you this involves a change from outer solution consciousness to inner solution consciousness i absolutely love this outer solution consciousness to inner solution consciousness you have to break the habit of thinking that the solution to your problems is to rearrange things outside chalo aaj aise nahi aise kar lete chalo isko aise nahi aise rakh dete you know ya acha ye wala ye wala job ya ye wala project ya ye wala idea kuch theek nahi ho raha hai to kuch aur idea kuch aur karte hain kuch aur sochte hain kuch aur you know it's 
कुछ और कुछ और कुछ और हम बाहर ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन वो एक बार रुक कर हम देखें कि ये अंदर कौन है जो बार बार कुछ और कुछ और कुछ और मांग रहा है विच ऑल्सो मीन्स दैट जो है उससे सेटिस्फाइड नहीं है नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद दैट तो ये कौन है ये क्या हिस्सा है हम उसको देख सकते हैं राइट सो दैट्स वॉट ही इज़ ऑल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट a change from outer solution consciousness to inner solution consciousness you have to break the habit of thinking that the solution to your problems is to rearrange things outside the only permanent solution to your problems is to go inside and let go of the part of you that seems to have so many problems with reality i like the way he's used the word it seems to have so many problems with reality there really is a way to let go of the part of you that sees everything as a problem it may seem impossible but it's not you can watch yourself be angry it's as an example he's taken the emotion be angry jo he's asking what if the problem or the issue needs action okay so good question what if the problem or solution needs action uh if you know what is the action to be taken then go ahead and take it but then again just before you do that because action is actually express it it is a physical action that you're talking about so um that's what i'm saying right if you clear what the action is go ahead and do it but if you can just spend few minutes to find out what is that really a problem and if it is then is that action uh, or the solution relevant to it so is that really a problem or is it inside something inside you which is perceiving it as a problem make sense are you getting what i'm saying uh and one needs to look at different options or choices yeah that's we talked about that <clears throat> so we're going to come up, uh, i'll come back to uh, i think there's a lapse in when you're hearing what i'm reading and the questions are coming up and i have moved uh, ahead so i apologize about that i don't think it's to do with my internet connectivity i think it's just something that happens on lives ah uh, so we talking about the way to let go okay you can watch yourself be angry this is before you actually become angry at somebody outside to wo to thoda late ho jayega na <laughs> in your feeling becoming aware of <coughs> the emotion of anger coming up watch it you don't have to think about it or analyze it please we then even if we think or analyze why am i angry what made me angry he did it she did it i did it or i didn't do this or i should have said that or i shouldn't have said that we we are already engaged in the emotion of anger we've engaged with that voice inside with that roommate right just witness it so don't think about it don't analyze it you can just be aware of it who is it that sees all this who notices the changes going on inside there's a separation between you and the anger you are the one who's in there noticing these things once you take that seat of consciousness you can get rid of these personal disturbances you start by watching he's going on repeating that just keep watching what you'll notice is that you're watching a human being's personality with all its strengths and weaknesses now look at that beautiful word that he's even you the phrase he's used the seat of consciousness so you are consciousness you're sitting on that seat of consciousness and you are watching a human being's personality with all its strengths and weaknesses there's no judgment there no, there's no criticism there you're just watching you might actually say you have a roommate this is what he's referring to referring now if you would like to meet your roommate i love this part okay i'm like again i've put like a lot of marks over there to uh, highlight that I, to remind myself that i must read this 
If you would like to meet your roommate, just try to sit inside yourself for a while in complete solitude and silence. Now people who uh, you know sit for meditation or do yoga or do any kind of you know activity, even people find it find uh, they're able to find sit with themselves in solitude and silence while cooking or some you know something like that. So if you're familiar with these kind of things, but he's got a twist over here. If you want to meet your roommate, try to sit inside yourself for a while in complete solitude and silence. But instead of finding silence, you're going to listen to, listen to the incessant chatter. So everything that is going on inside, just listen to that incessant chatter. Okay, for and he's given some examples here. Why am I doing this? I have more important things to do. This is such a waste of time. There's nobody in here but me. What's this all about? You know, he's given some really interesting uh, examples of his own mind chatter. That's your roommate, he says. The one who's saying all of that. Basically, you're not alone in there. There are two distinct aspects of your inner being. The first is you, the awareness, the witness the center of your willful intention and the other is that which you watch. We've just talked about that, right? So, in any situation or circumstance, your roommate could suddenly decide, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. I don't want to walk to, I don't want to talk to this person. When I say I don't want to be here, it doesn't mean in existence. Let's say you've gone somewhere, you've gone to a party and suddenly the your roommate just said, I, I, I don't want to be here. I, I, I don't like these people. It's so boring. Uh, or it's so this, it's so that. <laughs> you know, all kinds of things. It'll just start saying all of this. Um, at any moment, this thing can decide to freak, close down and fight with what's happening. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I've made some markings and I couldn't see my own pencil mark. Just a moment. One day it likes someone and the next day it decides to pick on everything they do. My life is a mess just because this thing that lives in here with me has to make a melodrama out of everything. This is uh, Michael's feeling. It's not like we all feel that, that my life is a mess because of this voice. This is Michael's uh, experience that he started realizing you should... You should sometimes read about uh, uh, about his story, Michael A. Singer. It's pretty interesting. So that was his statement. He felt that. He felt that his life was a mess because of this voice inside his head. So he continues. Once you've seen this and learned to no longer identify with your roommate, you're ready to free yourself. Spend a day watching every single thing your roommate does. <laughs> every time you meet somebody... Every time the phone rings, just try to watch. I mean, I'm not, he's not suggesting the phone rings, don't pick up the phone, but watch what's happening. And then, uh, this is an amazing example he's given here. A good time to watch it talk is while you're taking a shower. Just watch what that voice has to say. You will see that it never lets you just take a peaceful shower. <laughs> Your shower is for washing the body, not for watching the mind talk non-stop. See if you can stay conscious enough throughout the entire experience to be aware of what's going on. You'll be shocked but by what you see. It just jumps from one subject to the next. You have to watch this if you want to be free of it. You don't have to do anything about it. I'm reminding, he's reminding this over and over again. Just watch, don't do anything about it. The way to catch on to what your inner roommate is really like is to personify it externally. Now, this is a pretty uh, interesting exper uh, experiment that he's suggesting over here. Um, you're welcome to try it. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I'm going to read, I, I'm going to share it. He says, Personify it externally. Make believe that your roommate, the psyche, has a body of its own. 
You do this by taking the entire personality that you hear talking to you inside and imagine it as a person talking to you on the outside. Okay. Um, let it be a person who says on the outside exactly what the voice of your mind says inside. How would you relate to a person who opened their mouth to say everything your mental voice says? After a very uh, short period itself, you would tell them to leave. Just imagine somebody just yeah, constantly talking. This is reminding me of a play Faria had done about five years back. She had written and directed that play. Uh, he, and it was a double date. It, I mean, the name of the play was Double Date, where um, uh, a girl and a boy go on a date. It's a blind date. And there are two additional actors who played the role of their mind. So, uh, with the boy, there was an, another boy who was giving the dialogue of his mind. And with the girl who came on a date, there's another girl who played the uh, role of the girl's mind. Oh, it was amazing. It was so hilarious, that whole play. So, it's very similar. That's what he's even suggesting over here, you know. But it's very interesting what he writes over here. I'm going to continue. So... If there was somebody actually physically like that talking, after some time you might just ask that person to be quiet or you might just ask that person to leave. Okay, But when your inner friend continuously speaks up, you don't ever tell it to leave. There's almost nothing that voice can say that you don't pay full attention to. It pulls you right out of whatever you're doing, no matter how enjoyable and suddenly you're paying attention to whatever it has to say. And I, I remembered sitting in a, you know, doing, you could be doing something absolutely enjoyable. Uh, and I remember doing that when I was watching a movie in a theater, absolutely engrossed. And it was a hilarious movie. So I'm laughing my head off. And suddenly I, I was like, check your phone. You know, now in retrospect, it was the voice is saying, check, check your phone. And I just instantly picked up my phone and checked it. And there was you know, just some messages, random messages and I just happened and I got drawn into it and then I realized, okay, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I'm watching a movie and I went back to then watching the movie. It was a matter of few seconds, but I remember that uh, doing that, you know. Um, so, yeah, we, we do that. It pulls you right out of whatever you're doing, no matter how enjoyable and suddenly you're paying attention. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm just checking if I've missed reading anything else. Right. Until you've watched your roommate long enough to truly understand the predicament you're in, you really have no basis for practice that helps you deal with this mind. Now, what does he mean by you really have no basis for practices? Uh, please listen to this part. We're coming to the... It's literally the last bit of this chapter so stay with me and uh, hear me out until you've watched your roommate long enough to truly understand the predicament you're in you really won't uh, have any basis for practices that help you deal with this mind once you've made the decision to free yourself from the mental melodrama you are ready for teachings and techniques this is what it means okay Till you don't realize that the voice inside the head is creating a problem for you. You will not be ready enough to free yourself from it. Till the time you're engaged with it, listening to it, acting upon it or analyzing it in any form. If you're engaging in it, you will not feel that you need to free yourself. Until you don't really you know, become aware that you need to free yourself from it then any practice, whether it's yoga or meditation or introspection or writing, journaling, this, that, it's not going to help. Those are all things we're doing. Takes me back to the example that Michael talks about. Um, making changes outside is not really going to help till you realize that there are certain things inside that you need to make the changes. Okay. Once you've made this freedom, the meaning of your life, there are spiritual practices that can help you. These practices are what you do with your time 
in order to free yourself from yourself. You will eventually catch on that you have to distance yourself from your psyche. You do this by setting the direction of your life when you're clear and not letting the wavering mind deter you. you your will is stronger than the habit of listening to that vo voice. There is nothing you can't do. Your will is supreme over all of this. First, become conscious. Then, commit yourself to the inner work of freedom. Stand firm in the seat of witness and release the hold that the habitual mind has on you. I love that line. I'm going to just repeat that for yourself. First, become conscious. Then commit yourself to the inner work of freedom. Stand firm in the seat of the witness and release the hold that the habitual mind has on you. And that is the end of chapter 2. Now wasn't that quick? And let me lure you into watching tomorrow coming and joining me chapter 3 the topic is who are you if this is the voice then who are you so the seat of consciousness that he talks about uh, actually no I'm not going to tell you what this is stay in green, uh, intrigued stay curious uh, practice listening to your roommate today and uh, Leave some comments, people. I would love to hear from you. And let me know how you're enjoying this. That would also help. Until tomorrow, uh, take care of yourself. Love you all. Thank you for joining. Good night.